And we're back and dressed in black. It's your boys from J.R. Peters. It's myself, Mason Day, here with Dan Gillespie. And this week, we're actually talking about something that we had a question about from one of you. Uh, so yeah, so this week, we're going to talk about recirculating systems and how to keep nutrients at close to an optimal level. Uh, it's, you know, when you're using a recirculating system, you know, there's going to be a lot of, as Dan would say, it depends type answers, but we at least want to talk through some things. So Dan, let's kick it off there. What what are what are recirculating systems? Yep. So recirculating systems are sometimes going to be referred to as closed systems, um, but there are systems, hydroponic systems, or growing systems that capture and recycle the excess nutrient solution. Um, so you're you know you're giving the plant the nutrient solution, you're collecting that leachate, and you're reusing it. Um, so alternatively, so to contrast, the other side of that would be an open or a drain to waste system where all the excess nutrient solution is just being drained to waste. Um, so recycling systems are awesome because you can keep all that, you know, you're recycling, you're recycling, right? But they're very difficult to manage. Yeah. And that's where, uh, you know, I just want to also call out that this is where all of those beautiful acronyms come into play, like DWC and then RDWC. So RDWC is that recirculating part. So so yeah. So why are recirculating systems a little diff more difficult to manage, Dan? Yeah, it's a good question, and there's a couple reasons why they're going to be a little bit more difficult than an open or drained away system. Um, the first is you know it always starts with the source water quality, right? So water quality is very critical in a closed system. We're especially concerned about the sodium and chloride concentration of the source water when growing in a closed system. So we always want really our sodium and chloride to be as low as possible that's coming from our source water. But for recirculating system or closed system, it, it's really, really important. The reason for that is in a closed system, when the source water is high in sodium and chloride, these ions are going to begin to accumulate over time, which is going to lead to growth inhibitions. Um, so when the solution is provided to the plant, the plant's not really going to take up much of that sodium and chloride, so it's going to be left over. So over time, if you don't bleed your system or refresh it with a fresh solution or water, you're going to see the sodium and chloride begin to really accumulate. That's going to cause your EC to shoot up, and that's going to inhibit plant growth. All right. So if we're using this recirculating or closed system, we really need to keep an eye on our sodium and our chloride concentration and account for that. Uh, but what about nutrient uptake? Yeah. So that's the other thing that really makes the recirculating systems difficult to manage um, and very challenging. So when we supply a fresh nutrient solution to the plants, Obviously, the plants are going to take up some of those nutrients out of the solution, but it's not going to take up every single plant nutrient in that solution. So what begins to happen over time, so we're supplying that fresh solution, some nutrients such as nitrogen and potassium taken up at very high rates, right? But other micronutrients such as iron, they might not be taken up so much. So a lot of that iron gets recycled. And if we are constantly adding more nutrient solution to that, we begin over time, we'll start to see nutrient imbalances occur. So our nitrogen may be very low, our iron may begin to accumulate or vice versa. And what nutrients are going to do that? It, it, you know, it's kind of species dependent, environmental dependent, very dynamic. All right. But if we're hitting that almighty target EC, are we good then? Good question. No. So even if you know we're hitting that target EC, that's not telling us what nutrient salts are present. It just tells us the overall soluble salt concentration of the solution. So it's not going to tell, you know, even though we have an EC of say our target EC is 2.0, we could have an EC of 2.0, but that could be made up of calcium and all the micronutrients. The micronutrients don't really contribute to the EC so much, but the point I'm trying to make is you get these nutrients that get to accumulate. They're going to contribute to the EC while things such as nitrogen that are taken up in large amounts begin to deplete. So even though you're hitting that target EC, it doesn't tell you whether you have your target level of nitrogen, your target level of phosphorus, et cetera. That would require a lab analysis to tell you what the nutrient concentration um, or the individual elemental concentration is in the solution. Yeah, this is one of those few examples where EC 
uh, is not uh, you know the best use case because obviously that right. EC normally we're monitoring it to know what you know what levels of nutrients we've got in there, but this is it really could be you know any kind of ions that are left floating right. in that recirculating solution. All exactly. right, so so even if our our, TC, our target EC is being hit, we still might be providing too little or too much of you know a particular nutrient. So should we be topping off this like these reservoirs with some fertilizer? Yeah, that's a tricky one. So the problem with topping off is that we're with the premix fertilizer, we're going to be adding all the nutrients back at the same time. So when we're recycling our solution, we talked about those nutrient imbalances. So let's just use an example. Let's say our nitrogen was very low in the solution, but our iron was very high. When we top off, we're adding more nitrogen, but we're also adding iron and we, you know, maybe we don't need that in this case. So that's where it becomes a little bit difficult where we need to kind of consider that it's you know we can top off the but it's not going to correct our nutrient imbalances you know that makes sense dan we don't want to add everything back in there because obviously if some things are still left over we don't want to keep pouring like you said the iron back on top of there so if there are already in you know there's already imbalances in that solution right you're exactly right Mason. and the, the iron was just an example so you know it, it could be other things in reality um it's going to be very dynamic and it's going to be different for everyone really um so yeah like you said adding back in a fresh solution is going to add everything at once which often is not going to correct the nutrient imbalances so what what should we be doing you know should we you know how do we correct that yes that is a tough one and it, it depends so you know, as I mentioned, each species is going to show different nutrient uptake patterns, and that's going to vary even in different environments. So there's not really a one size fits all answer to that. The only real way to know when nutrient imbalances are beginning to occur or are occurring is to send a nutrient analysis, or unless you just see your plant looking unhappy, you can kind of make the assumption. But, you know, as a rule of thumb, if, if you're really trying to keep things simple, I, I would replace your nutrient solution maybe every two to four weeks. Four weeks would kind of be the furthest extent that I would feel comfortable going. You, you may be able to extend it further than that. Um, if you wanted to keep it as close to optimum at all times, you should probably do it more like every week. Um, I found every two weeks is kind of a nice happy medium, that two to four week range. But again, it, it's going to be very dependent on the crops being grown, the environment that they're being grown in um and also the the growth stage right so the plant's going to have different nutrient demands as it transitions it's taken up more of particular nutrients at different growth stages um so i guess to kind of bring that home mason and answer your question is what should you do is if you really wanted to you know put in the work maybe turn the solution over every week if you're like me and want to keep it a little bit more simple and uh just <laughs> a little bit lazy maybe push it more two to four weeks you know, if you're in a commercial setting and you're really looking to keep things optimal at all time, you're probably going to be sending lab samples to the lab at least every other week or so to check in to see when those imbalances are beginning to occur. And then when those imbalances are beginning to occur is when you would refresh that solution. Does that make uh, sense? That makes sense to me, man. And, you know, I, you know, it's just you got you think that refreshing, you know, that nutrient solution, your plants are continuously eating in that scenario. Right. So they're yeah. always sitting in that nutrient solution. And, you know, sometimes plants are pickier eaters, right? So they're eating yeah. some, they're soaking up some of those nutrients that they really like and some of those other things in there that they maybe only need a little bit of. And that's why it's important yeah. that we can't top it off all the time. Uh, so really the best attitude is that if we're gonna be in a recirculating system to clean it out as much as we can and make sure that we're providing the the recommended rates of nutrients so that our plants are always able to to grab a snack when they're hungry. Yeah, and one thing I do, Mason, with that, that excess recycled solution whenever i'm refreshing it i'll take that excess solution use it on my outdoor plants or my house plants or something like that too so you can still get some use out of it it's just you know you can kind of consider the nutrient balances aren't perfect well perfect dan i think that this answers the questions that we got you know obviously it's not a one-size-fits-all solution but want to give you guys a little bit of you know some of our takes on how to handle uh adding nutrients to a recirculating system and as always we're here for your questions uh we will be taking a one week break from getting technical but then we'll be back um and you know really that first full week of april and we've got an exciting uh, episode planned for you then so we'll see you then and until that time if you have questions uh, you can send them here you know to info at jacksnutrients.com you can reach out in the comments whether you're seeing it on instagram youtube any of those places we're always down to hear what you think and uh yeah stay safe oh. out there you guys
See you guys.